Peace, peace, peace. It's Chocolate Mariah early in the morning. We've been, you know, we've been getting up getting these messages out there early this morning. How y'all doing? First of all, I want to say sun rises. Let's pay all due respects to the creator. The sun rises. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Our moon. Oh, we got a little special morning again. Ancestors woke me up and says, hey, uh, you need to talk about religion, but mainly the church industry, the church industry, because church is a big business. Let's get into it. Well, gods and goddesses, I'm not here to condemn church. No. Church has always been a sanctuary for people all together. But when we now see that church has taken a turn, the turn is it's being exposed by many different things. But the people that's in church knew that a lot of things that's happening, fornication, stealing, lying, and even death has been going in church. And it's not the church foundation of church, it's people. See, people inject their sinister ways in these buildings and try to protect the representation, the rep, the, the, they rep, excuse me, they rep about church by coming up with all kinds of lies and discreet. Let me tell you something. I've been in church, you ain't gonna tell me nothing. And I'm gonna sit up there, that's not what it's all about, that's a lie. No, it's just the truth. People makes the church. It's never the building. You could stand outside in a beautiful sunny day, 86 degrees, cool breeze coming in, and have a thousand people, you got your microphone, and that's your church. Church is never the building, it's the people. It always has and it always will be. But people also make the church either it's going to be a great church, good church, or it's going to be an ugly church. And once that represents that 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 your your, your rep has been tainted, it carries out. You got molestation. People getting molested over the years. All different kind of churches. You had all kind of activities going on. Now, you know what? Church also saved lives. Let's put that in there. Church had always saved lives. Now, was it church or was it the people? Well, because that building happened to be at a certain spot, at a certain block, and a person's walking past and said, oh my God, that's church. I need to go inside to save my life. Then the people that's inside, you're supposed to make people feel warm. And church have, and the people have, made people people change their lives. Let's be real about this. It's not always about negativity. Let's be the truth how church has saved people's lives. And people changed and became perspective and gentlemen and kind people walking on this earth. Now you got your negative side and you got your positive side. But I say this, it was always the person who wanted to change because they was tired of being on that negative side. But that building, being where it was at, and his rep rep had gave it uh, a light at the end of the tunnel for so many people. Remember, church has a good side and has a bad side. Let's don't forget that. Now, what we need to understand is this here. It's people. People are the significance of church. We can't sit up here and pretend that it is not. Let's keep it real. You know, I know a lot of people who go to church. And I know a lot of good, respectful people who go to church and they treat people exactly 
the way they're supposed to be treated with love. I do. I do. And then I know people who go to church and they really put on that mask. They put this clothing cloth of a sheep, a lamb. But underneath that cloth is a wolf. Always hunting, always seeking, always looking to get what they want. Oh yeah. See, you gotta understand church always gonna have a negative side and a positive side. Remember, walk on in. All can come in. As they said, the devil will come into church. Sure he can. Oh, we all know that. How many preachers have sex with their um, congregation females and males? How many times it was swept underneath the rug to we don't let new we don't need nobody to know these things? Because if people find this out, they ain't not gonna want to come to the church. How many deacons slept with somebody else's wife? And next you know it was on the news. And somebody's dead. Huh? Who are we fooling? How many people had suffered? How many people are suffering while they're in church? How can a pastor and his family prosper, but the people in the neighborhood, in that church, is not prospering. Because that man or that woman that goes into a church that's supposed to be holy, the power and the light that they have, supposed to signify enlightening the neighborhood and the community. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There's some, some communities that's like that. Real talk. There's some communities that is like that. And some communities, they got four, five, six different churches on a, on, in a, on a 20 block area. And they ain't got none of that. Killing, death, robbing, stealing. Why is this? Let's use our common sense. Why is this? Let's use our common sense. Why is this happening? You can have church in a 20 block area and they got like that you got your well actually yes yeah, sorry y'all and they got four or five churches in this four block area that's another thing we gotta ask ourselves now in some neighborhoods and it depends on where you live at but here in the darker race the melanin race darker race you have that I'm gonna tell you the arrogance of that if you got this big one church on one block and then you got all these small little churches it could be right across the street. Now, why is that? Why is you got one big main church and three or four little churches that could be in, that, in the same area, right across the street from each other? I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. It's just like having a congregation we outside with our tent. And then I got four or five different tents and everybody's preaching at the same time. I mean, do that make sense to y'all? Church, the negative and the positive. And then church has great things when they feed people. See, the, I told you now, we got we to gotta roll this down the middle because church also feed people. Let's don't, just don't, 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 let's don't lie about this. We got to tell the truth. So you got church that feed people. They have these um, programs and the people in the neighborhood, they get fed. They rely on these programs. We got to be real about this now. We got to be real. And I've been to these churches. I even helped. You know, I even went there and got food. I'm not going to tell you no lie. I myself, years ago, used to go to churches and get food. They call it a pantry. Some of you probably know that. They call it a pantry. 
And these people provide food for the community. Church is good and church is bad. We got to keep it real. And it's not the church, the building itself. It's the people who still have demons inside them. These people have uh, sheep clothing, and underneath that clothing is a wolf waiting to hunt. I see you in part two. I'm Chocolate Almond Rock. The ancestors spoke, and it's time to talk. <laughs>